me. I moved back to South Florida in 2016. And like I went in a whole two years of like living at home with my parents, doing a lot of projects for 500, 600 bucks. But I built my portfolio. Like my breaking point was at the end of those two years where I really had a solid portfolio. I really got an understanding of marketing of like the clients don't care about video. Like they don't care if I'm shooting with the Nikon D7100, like a $500 camera versus like other friends are shooting with like a C200 and they're like, I can't get a job. So like the clients don't tell the difference. All they care about does the final product look good so man so what's happening talk to me good um uh, you know i mean yeah man i've been watching your stuff you have a lot of good stuff man uh, on youtube and i think one thing i noticed about you is like when i ask a question like you'll you'll get back to me i don't know if you you know i got you on instagram in youtube uh tony Coyar, i don't know if you see it sometimes but you know uh -huh. comment and you'll get back to me and do it like i appreciate that and uh you know i think at one point i was just like man i gotta set up a coaching call with you because there's only so many questions you can ask and just you know i want to uh make sure that your time is valued you know what i mean and so set this up and and uh pay that forward so i just want to say yeah man i appreciate that oh man i'm happy to do it bro i was uh i remember being in your situation not too long ago like when i started and like i reached out to so many people uh, i'm gonna offer to work for free just to get my foot in the door and like i got shut down so many times that i said like when i get to the position i'm able to give back like i want to be the guy that does so i appreciate yeah. it yeah and i see that a lot and i think that's what made me you know because i bought like i bought thousand dollar courses man uh -huh. and you know like sometimes the the same thing isn't there man the way the way you're doing it and setting it up like there's a lot of gold there whereas it's on youtube for free and somewhere else it's like people are charging for that man and i just feel like your channel gives a lot more compared to these these other courses but yeah brother i definitely wanted to go over kind of like my situation my okay. struggles right now you know i've been I, I i started my business i would say in the pandemic like right right during it i was working uh, as a server the pandemic hit you know i was out of a job basically they, they laid everyone off and i said you know what let me pursue my video production business a little more and so since then i've been pursuing it a little bit you know i've done photos i've done like videos man kind of like a little bit of everything mm -hmm. you know building a, a clientele so i've been able to make some money but nothing on the level of let's say like 50k 100k you know what I mean? Kind of where it's like a full-time business. I would so, say I've been able to make enough. So when you say 50 to hundred K mean per project, you mean overall over the year? Over the year. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, I know his levels to that for now, you know, I was going to get, you know, everyone's different. Like, and I was just saying, like, I haven't, I haven't done a hundred K I've put up proposals for like a hundred thousand dollar job. Like I didn't close them, but I just kind of want to get an idea where you're at, but okay, go ahead. Got you. Um, but yeah, man. So, but you know, those projects, they've been, you know, a couple like 500 here, you know, 100 or 200 for like real estate photos, things like that. Um, and I guess my goal is to get to the point where I can be charging, you know, like 1500, 2000 um, consistently for video production. And, and I guess my struggle is going about um, selling that to the right people, getting in front of the right people and attracting them to my business. Because I've tried a, a couple different things. Um, and I'm just trying to see where where could I where could I work on it more. So what have you tried? Um, so right now I'm in a networking group. It's called BNI. You heard of that? Yep. Yeah. So uh, I joined that one. Um, you know, it, it, it's been a good group. I like I met someone there and we've done some business together. But again, you know, it's like these small monthly projects, nothing too too crazy. Um, but yeah, I did like the BNI thing. You know, started going to other groups and like meeting other people and you know, they'll come here and there and it's my ideal clients. And the way I want to position my business is, you know, that corporate slash commercial type of uh, setting compared to like the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, but I do get a lot of, I guess, some opportunities too for the wedding. And my, my thing is to steer this business toward that side. And I think maybe I just need some insight on your journey and kind of like how you know, the way you got to where you are now, how, how you got there basically, and what you had to do. Um, you know, and I've done like cold outreach. I've done free videos too. I remember seeing that one video where you talk about how you did a free video for a dentist and in exchange, you know, they'll give you a, you know, a recommendation that, that worked out pretty good for me too. I did a free video for an MMA gym 
mm-hmm. and they ended up uh like signing a, a 2k deal with me nice so, yeah it taught me a lot and you know it just made me believe in my my skills a lot more and uh you know i, I still carry that mentality forward but i think i'm just more choosy about it you know i'm like i want to make sure it's the right person, the right business, if I were to do that. Um, but of course, you know, I want to step away from that and kind of like start closing deals rather than um, doing them all for free and getting my foot in the door that way. So let's say out of five deals that you talk to clients for like paid work, how many of those are you closing? All right. So, you know, like the last one was a, was a mechanic. I ended up closing that one. Um, you know, 600 monthly retainer, uh, that includes like, like social videos and like two, like 15 second videos and like six photos. Then the one before that, it was like an event. It was this guy speaking and, um, he wanted to record himself speaking. That was like a $500 gig. Uh, so nothing crazy. The 600 monthly one for the mechanic, you're still doing that? Yeah, still doing that. And what does he get for $600? So I, so we're doing, we're doing 12 photos and four videos, but social videos. So what social uh, videos? Like, you know, like 15 seconds, like super short, not like commercial quality or, you know, bringing in lights. I told them like, um, it'll be a natural lighting kind of setting. And I told him, you know, I, I sent them a package. Oh, if you want, you know, me to bring lighting, you got to bump it up to like a $1,200 package. So They're not going to do that. I know. So client, here, here's the thing. Like if you went to a dentist and the dentist gave you options to choose what he wanted to use for, for you to like fix your teeth or whatever, you'd be like, well, I don't need the anesthesia. What I don't need this. A doctor be like, dude, if you want to fix your teeth, like these are the things I need to do. So you give them the options of like, mm-hmm. I won't bring this. I won't bring that. The only thing that hinders is you from delivering a better project. Because every project that you go into, you should be thinking, how can I leverage this project for my next one? So like if somebody's paying me a thousand dollar job, I'm going to deliver a two thousand dollar job and like vice versa. You're always going to be leveling up whatever work on. So I never give the clients because I used to do that in the beginning. I was like, OK, I'm going to bring the 50, the 35, the 85. The clients like, well, I don't need an 85. I'm like, I'm doing portraits. I need an 85. They're like, no, we don't need an 85. I'm like, OK. And then be like, I don't like the way the photos look like it's too wide. I'm like, well, you told me I didn't bring the 85. And they're like, well, I didn't know that you're the photographer. I was like, OK, fair enough. You know what I mean? So like, I don't let them dictate. I'll bring whatever I need to get the better project out of them. Okay, so let's go back to the 600 monthly real quick. How much time do you spend doing the 12 photos and four videos shooting? Uh, shooting, man, I, I would say like one hour and 30 minutes. It's two really? shops. Yeah. So like two shops. At, yeah, man, I try to, you know, stay and just uh, like 30 minutes, the extra 30 minutes is like an extra, but I try to get one hour at each shop. You think that's a lot? I don't think it's enough. You think it's enough? Okay. Because here's the way I do it. Like I have a four, like right now we have a two hour minute. Like if you need me to come out and film for one hour, I have a two hour minimum. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the one. It's like, if you're like, Hey, I have an event. I need coverage from 11 to 12. I'd be like, okay, it's a two hour minimum. I get there at 1030 and then we leave at 1130. There's 30 minutes of setup. There's 30 minutes of breakdown. There's two hour minimum. You get one hour of coverage. So now what, what pretty much what I'm trying to figure out right now is what's your hourly, what's your hourly rate? Yeah, I don't, I've, I haven't really set that up. I think most of the time I try to uh, go off like value-based pricing, right? You're so, not a value-based pricing yet. Because okay. if you're value-based pricing, you'd be charging away more money. Like value-based yeah. pricing is a deal that close at $14,000 to do a 30 second video that's done in like two days. Because to them, they value the video being done in two days. Cause like 30 seconds, like I'm literally going on, on freaking pond five, downloading seven clips, probably spending like five, 600 bucks. I'm spending like 10 hours overnight working on a video to send to them and I could charge them 14,000 because they need it right away. That's value based pricing. You okay. doing, you know, 12 photos and four videos for 600 bucks, the value to the, to your clients way more than $600. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think yeah. for a lot of people try to do like value based price in the beginning, you need to figure out what your hourly rate is first. And then it's like, I think most people need to start, you need to figure out what your hourly rate is first. And then from hourly rate, you go into project base, which you, you like, you eliminate the hours out of it completely, but you have an idea. You'd be like, Hey, a project like this, it's going to be between like 2000 and 1500 bucks. And like, it might take you an hour to do it. It might take you two hours to do it. And then the level after that is value-based pricing. And they're like, Hey, 
I'm trying to solve this problem. I'm like, I'm like, Hey, me coming in here to do photos for you and videos, like, what are we trying to do? Like, what's the problem we're trying to solve here? And he'll tell you like, well, I'm trying to get more people to come and do this. And that's like, okay, so if 10 people came in and you did, you know, five transmission, you know, changes in the next month, how much is that worth to you? And he's like, probably like 50 grand. And you're like, okay, well, I could do that for $10,000. And he's like, $10,000. I'm like, yeah, like one person comes in, you're able to make 50 grand and you're spending, you're investing what 20, like what 15%, we'll call it 17, 18% for you to make, you know, 40,000 on top of that. Any business owner, you told me if I can give you 10 grand right now, you're going to bring me back $40,000. I'm wiring you the fucking money. Like no questions about it. Right. That's value based pricing. So I think for you right now, we need to figure out, okay, what is the hourly rate that I need to be making on every single project moving forward? Okay. That's going to give you a base of what you need. So if a client's like, Hey, it's two hours. Like, Hey, for me to come on in two hours, just to film something is going to cost you $400. This is just for me to film not including editing is that within your budget that's where we need to get to you at so okay so let's go back because usually um a lot of people don't take in consideration like all the time in between that goes into this so let's say you spend two hours filming right and there's also you know we'll call it an hour before that that you're prepping to get to doing all the work and then there's also another hour of putting all the stuff away so really this two hour shoot you're ready at four hours half a day and then from that how much time you spent editing the photos and doing the editing the videos uh, i made it it was kind of slow the first time because i'm mm -hmm. still trying to figure out the process but then the second time it went a lot faster um but yeah like the problem right it comes with like the quality it's like i wish i could i, I, I want to bring lights and get a better quality but yeah, it's like, yeah, and I think you're right about that. You know, you should be producing that $2,000 quality for that 600. And I think maybe that's my mistake. And, um, you know, and I think the other part where I messed up and you let me know what you think. When we, when we what, were on the phone call. One thing real quick, let's start changing the word messed up because you didn't mess up, right? Like you're still learning process. And I want you to start thinking a lot about the words that you, like you say to yourself, so like the whole mess up. I love that you take accountability for it, but like, it's, it's all a learning process. Right. And like, I learned this from Chris, like when Chris, he's like, he's like, I never fail. It's always my first attempt in learning like that, like making those shifts into how you talk about your business, how you talk to yourself, like you're not messing up, you're learning, you know, no, is just next opportunity. So like, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, I want you to start tapping in into that. No, that's good. Appreciate it, man. For sure. Um, uh, so on the phone, you know, so I'm talking, I guess, to kind of like the social media manager or something. They're doing like other shops. And so she calls me and, you know, I, I asked her, I'm like, okay, you know, I go through my, my questionnaire. I ask her a little bit about the business. What are they trying to accomplish? Um, you know, bring in more people. Um, they're trying to get more content out. I'm like, okay. You know, I, I think, yeah, I didn't ask them about what is that worth to them. You know, that that's one question I should ask, like always I'm thinking now, but then I asked her, you know, what's your budget, you know, should you ask for a person's budget or should you tell them what does it normally cost? Um, so normally the rule I've learned is if I'm talking from talking to the business owner, I'm telling them right now, I'd be like, Hey, listen, like, I'm really excited about this and I don't want to get ahead of myself on past projects like this that we worked on. It's normally between like 1500 to 750 a month for us to come out and do something like this. Is that within your budget? And that's what I'm usually, if I'm talking to a business owner, if I'm talking to someone that's doing marketing for a company and it depends too, cause you have like, if people that are social media managers that manage people's accounts that don't have any, they have no say on like, no, like I know somebody that manages somebody's like account and when people hit, hit her up or they hit up the account to like, yo, like I want to do this. She'll she fucking deletes the message. You know what I mean? Like they don't want you to come in and be able to offer them. So like, if I'm not talking to the business owner, like I want to find out who the business owner is. Like, so I never rely on like talking to a social media manager because like they normally don't have, like if you're talking to a marketing or managing, like a marketing director or marketing coordinator, some kind of person that's like within that company, that's a different story. If you're talking to a company that's managing that account for another person, like honestly, you're wasting your time unless they reached out to you. But in that situation, I will ask them and be like, hey, what is your budget? And they're telling me like, we don't have a budget. Like you tell me how much this costs. I'll tell them the exact same thing. Normally projects like this on monthly retainers go between 1500 to 750. If it's a one-time thing, it's closer to 2000. Okay, nice. Um, so I think she's doing like, so she's the community 
relationships manager which i'm guessing is just kind of like a more vague way of it saying could, it you know yeah i mean what's her does she have like an official are you like just dming her or what's her situation no so i'm guessing she works for them she okay. like handles the marketing but she's not a director because i don't think they have one yet okay uh, yeah so I, I i talk with her um because he gave i met him at like a bni event okay he, he gave uh my business card to her so then that um we can like do the transaction between me and her gotcha all right so i mean that's a different situation um okay so like you guys talked and now and then what happened from there that's when you told her the price well yeah that's when we had the phone call and i kind of asked her more about you know what what is it they're trying to achieve um things like that and then you know when it came down to the pricing i kind of thought about two things i'm like okay should i be like what's your budget or should i tell her normally this goes for this amount because in my mind i'm thinking you know uh, maybe she just wants to lowball it that way you know she could save the company some money or you know things like that or maybe that is their budget but i just never know right i mean there's ways to do it and like i would spend a lot of time watching more of chris's videos he has a lot of videos on this but it all comes down to you when you talk when you ask them about money how do they reply so you're like hey it's 600 bucks and she's like great you charge too little if there's no resistance like i'd rather tell somebody like the other day i had somebody that like wanted me to edit a video for them and i was like listen like how soon do you, do you need this and they're like we need it next we like we need it by the end of friday i was like if you need it by the end of friday it's 1500 bucks if you need it by next week it's a thousand i never heard back from them i honestly didn't want the project but it was just one of those things of like and they're like, okay, we'll get back to you. Like, I knew it was too much. Is in situations when you're when you're like, hey, it's five hundred bucks. I'm like, okay, can we start today? They had more money to spend. You know what I mean? So now they were like, so like they'd be like, well, a thousand is a lot. I was like, so that's when you reverse run them. So how much were you thinking? Okay. So that's like it never hurts you to like it never hurts you to sit in like it will hurt you sometimes to like say the number first. Like the ones where I did those commercials for like fourteen thousand. Like I let them tell me like, Hey, I'm like, I'm like, Hey, ballpark and put in a proposal together. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Where's the ball? Like if we could do everything we talked about here, where's the number that would really make this work for you guys. And then there'd be like, our budget right now is between like 18 to like 13,000, depending on the deliverables. I'm like, all right, cool. I sent one for 14,000 and then they're like, done, let's move forward. You know what I mean? Like I don't be, and they ended up upselling them on doing like additional cuts because I knew they had more budget, but that it all comes down to like, you get more comfortable just talking about money and having more at bats with those kind of people. Yeah, that's true, man. Um, and I, I guess my question is, you know, how do you level up from there? Um, you know, from your experience going through all of this, I saw like, you were talking about, you know, you, you did some photos, you did some um, Facebook ads, things like that. So my question is, out of all those, um, which one's the highest selling for you? You know, what, like a percentage wise, what do clients come to you most for? Most of the stuff we're doing right now are corporate interviews. Um, I don't do photo, like if I have a photo job, like a lot of the stuff that I started doing now that's the most profitable for me or the jobs that I don't have to do. So if somebody comes to me with photos, I have two or three photographers that will be like, hey, I got a project. Um, I need like four headshots. How much you charge for that? And they're like, this much. I call, like, I literally call three people, find out how much you're going to charge me for four. And they'd be like, like a hundred bucks each. And I'd be like, all right, cool. I'll call back my client and be like, hey, we can do the headshots for 150 each. So like, I'll make $50 on their one, on, on that 150, right? And like, all I had to do is delegate the meeting and core, like, you know, I'll strip to the meeting and like you know i'll make sure like i'll like i'm there just run the show i'm like hey let me see the photos hey let's try that those are the projects that are most profitable on so like realizing it's like whatever you think you're charging like you need to be able to double that to hire somebody else to do the job for you those are the jobs that are the most profitable for me so like in the beginning it's harder to do that because like if you're still having issues closing a two thousand dollar deal it's hard for you to be profitable in that range, unless you know a lot of other people in the same position that you are, and you can hire them to deliver the same level of work as you to then be able to charge more money. Because like I learned that last year, um, we did a commercial and I hired a buddy of mine to do it. And I just wanted to try it out, right? Chris is always telling us to like, go try and do shit. So like I got a project, I think it was like, I think it was like five G's or something like that. Yeah. The, the client okayed us on. And then uh, my friend said he'd do it for 3,500 bucks. So I had like a $1,500, like, you know, window. And, um, you know, I did a lot of pre-production. I coordinated the shoe. Like I did a little bit of location scouting. But the day of the shoe, I just had to show up. I had to show up and direct. I didn't have to fucking pack my car. I didn't have to load like, my, like, like when I got home, didn't have to charge batteries. 
And when I got home, I was working on another deal. I was working on an edit. So like, I was like, I was like, oh my God. I was like, you know, when you think about it, it's like, oh, it's four hours of your day. Like you have a half day shoot. And you're like, oh, it's only four hours. It's way more than four hours because it's all the time that you're losing opportunity of not working on the next project. And that's the cost that we don't see going into things. So on that day, I was like, wow, I just got home. This dude's editing the project for me. He's like, yeah, I made after like time and expenses. Let's say I made $800 on this $5,000 project. But that allowed me to close like two more projects that I wouldn't have time to do if I was actually working on that shoe so it's like those are the little things where i think it comes with like you leveling up because it all, all comes down to you talking about money because like um i actually think i have that call with the client on my youtube but he was thinking like 3,500 bucks. And I was like, I was like, listen, man, I was like, for 3,500 bucks, I was like, I can make you an like, okay, commercial, or you can probably find somebody else. So I was like, for 5,000, I can make you something that like, you're gonna like, like, you're gonna love. Cause just like, and I, and I repeat, I forgot what it was, but it was just like, he's like, yeah, I want it action. I want this. I want that. I was like, sounds like, I'm like, are we talking like 20,000? He's like, 20,000. He's like, he's like, I was thinking like 3,500. He's like, so you wanted a car chase? You wanted this? You wanted like drone? And he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm like, I was like, dude, $3,500 just doesn't seem like a lot. And he's like, He's like, now that you're you're saying it out loud, like it doesn't sound like a lot. I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, it's like, can we do five? Like, I could do something for five. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I could do five. I'm like, all right, dope. But I anchored him at 20,000, right? When I was like, I got all really excited. I'm like, what are we thinking? And then he's like, 20,000. So like when he hears 5,000 compared to 20,000, it sounds like a deal, right? But it all comes, it's it's baby steps. And yeah. you know, the best thing for you to do is like get comfortable talking about money in the beginning. I used to like, you just literally pretend like I'll call my sister and I'd be like, like, hey, I'm looking for a video. And like, we just go back and forth. Like, you know, just getting used to like talking about money, saying the numbers. So when somebody did call, I'd be like, yeah. I was like, I feel very comfortable getting on a phone call with somebody right now. I'd be like, yo, it's gonna be 5,000 for a video like this. And then they don't like 5,000 is too much. I'm like, all right, I understand if anything changes, like, let me know. I'm here to help. But I feel comfortable at that state. But it took me a while to get here, right? I mean, I moved back to South Florida in 2016. And like, I went in a whole two years of like living at home with my parents, doing a lot of projects for 500, 600 bucks. But I built my portfolio. Like my breaking point was at the end of those two years where I really had a solid portfolio. I really got an understanding of marketing of like, okay, the clients don't care about video. Like they don't care if I'm shooting with the Nikon D7100, like a $500 camera versus like other friends are shooting with like, you know, a C200 and they're like, I can't get a job. So like the clients don't tell the difference. All they care about, does the final product look good? Mm. Like I started understanding more of the business sides. And then I started charging more money because like when a client's called, I'd be like, yo, two grand, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500. And then every time that call, I got a phone call. I would slowly raise my price, but I knew at that point, everything I put out on my portfolio look like a $2,000 uh, project. So when the clients called me, I'm like, what video did you like? And they're like, oh, I like that dentist one. That one was 2,500 bucks. Well, can we do something for like 2,000? I could do a one minute video for 2,000. And they're like, okay, great. You know what I mean? So it's always like the client doesn't agree with you at your price as you're moving up, adjust a deliverable. If I can't get the 2,500, you're not getting a two minute video. You want a two minute video? It's 2,500 minute video. I could do 15, maybe I could do two, but you know, don't be afraid to, it's like, it's all negotiation. And I think that's a really important thing is understanding it's a negotiation on both sides. Remember if the client already calls you, you're already qualified. You know what I mean? Like, do you ever like call a restaurant that you like look at their menu and the menu sucked and you're like, Hey, you got a reservation? No, you're not fucking calling that place. You're calling, you're picking up, you're going to the next place. Okay. This one looks better. Then you call to make that exact same thing for a video. So remember if a client already DMs you, if a client already calls you, you're already qualified. So my question is then, if that's not the case, how do you go about, um, you know, reaching out to them? What's your strategy for that? If it's not the case, the best way for you to reach out to them is have a portfolio that reflects what is it that they're trying to do. So like with me and dentists, it was easy for me to reach out to dentists and be like, be like, hey, John, saw your reviews online. Love what you guys are doing at your dental practice. Um, Want to reach out. I recently did a project with Riverbend Family Dentist. Uh, the video is currently ranking on number one on YouTube. Uh, wanted to share this with you and get your thoughts on, uh, are you guys doing any video marketing uh, plans for this year? So that's the way that I start my first initial connection with a client. And it's, and you could switch that to any other, like if it's a dentist, if it's like an AC company, a flooring company, it's the same thing. All you, you're doing is building that initial like uh, point of connection. Cause I'm not just going to call you and be like, yo, uh, I got a video. You want to buy one? There's no, you know, there's no connection there there's no relationship so now you know i use uh email tracking software i know that they open my 
my email 27 times. I know that they watched my video two or three times because they get a notification on Dropbox every time the link clicks. So the second or third time when that link is being clicked or I get a notification that they're opening my email, John, what's happening, bro? Um, I'm trying to get a hold of you, man. It's like, oh my God, Rodrigo is actually just looking at your email. No way, man. What What's happening? What questions do you have? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's when I call and I do the outreach to find out like, hey, so like, what are you thinking? Like, you know, what did you like about the videos? What are your questions? What are you hesitant about? How can I help you? Like, you know, they'll tell you like, you know, I'm just looking around like, I'm, and you're like, like, that's cool. Let me help you. What are you looking for? Like, you know, what are you looking to qualify? What's going to be like, honestly, you just trying to be helpful to them. Or even there's another really good one, good one from Marty Newmeyer and Chris that Marty Newmeyer talks about when he was getting started in the, uh, the tech design, like, his is like back then when you bought software, you sort of like Best Buy and you buy, like buy the box for the software. And he did design packaging for software, but he was like, he could like called Apple called Microsoft. And he'd just be like, Hey, you don't know me. And I don't know you, but my name is Marty. And we designed really awesome software packaging for businesses similar to yours. I know you're probably not in the industry or like in the market for it right now, but if you ever have any questions or if you're ever looking for someone to do design packaging for you, I'd love to be the guy that you call first to answer any questions you may have. Just plant to the seed, follow up, you know, every, every month. Hey, just see how everything is going. It's a long process. And I think a lot of us, you know, we want everything to happen so fast, but when you can start planting those seeds throughout the year, eventually it has a compound effect and that's all I did my first two years, the free videos, it's all planting yeah. seeds, getting my name out there. Like people are knowing those seeds are growing eventually. Like be honest with you, dude, I have not looked a client for probably over a year and a half. Like other than like me going like the last dentist deal I got, which was around like $20,000 was from doing a clubhouse call randomly uh somebody that did he's a marketing director for uh a practice heard me talking about video marketing and he's like dude i run uh i do marketing for five practices we need videos let's do it you know what i mean like he reached out to me like and, and, and then don't go past the sale it's already like when we start let me send you the contract you know what i mean let's let's get going don't go past the sale but it's all in the process of like just understanding like what is the business goals that your video is going to help them reach because that's all the video is video is just a tool you're you're a marketer that just happens to use video and you're just helping them reach their goal using that video i, I know you said uh, you talked a little bit about the like facebook ads mm -hmm. you said you know that's something you can use out of like all the videos you do how many times do you end up running ads for them? I stopped running ads for clients. There's only one client that I run ads for and I barely do it anymore. It's uh, one of my buddy's coffee companies. I kind of stopped doing it because honestly, I got to the point that like, I just don't enjoy doing ads. It is yeah. a lot of work. It's a lot of maintenance that unless you're dealing with a client that has like $3,000 a month. Like if the client has $3,000 a month to spend on ads that like, Hey, if you're going to spend 1500 bucks on your ad spend and $1,500 as a fee for me to manage those ads, it makes sense for me. But like a lot of people that I was working with, they're like, Oh, I got 500 bucks. or I got a thousand dollars. Like it was so much work to manage different campaigns. And then you're like, Hey, we need to like make these changes in your website to like make the pixel and like the tracking. It just got to a point that I was like, it's more than what, like the return in time and investment for me to actually do the ads. It doesn't help me. Now it doesn't hurt you to learn about the ads and understand how the red, like the ads run. Like it doesn't hurt. Like for me, it was the same thing. I was doing photos for a company and I was just kind of doing the video and I don't know how much of my story, you know, but they're going to start doing this concert series. I was like, Hey, I'm learning about Facebook ads. Can I run some ads for you? And she's like, how much do you need? I was like $300 budget. She's like, she's like, really? She's like, yeah, she's like done. And then later on, she told me that was the cheapest amount she ever heard but the ads were doing really good and the way that my budget worked with her was like it was based on like how much she, she spent but the problem was at that that time the ad platform was so new that the ads got so like the ads became so good that she was only spending like $50 on ads a week. And I was making like 20 bucks on these ads, but I was managing them the whole week. And I was like, dude, like I'm killing myself for like what, $60 a month to manage these ads. I learned a lot from there, but I was just one of those things like, okay, I was like, I'm not that interested in doing this anymore. You know what I mean? So like that, I was like, okay, what are companies? Now I work with marketing agencies that don't do video that run ads for a client. So I let like them a, handle that. Is that a good partner for you then? Like a, a marketing agency? Look for marketing agencies. Look for the people that service your clients, right? So like I'd spend on top of like, honestly, I'd rather have you and we'll check out your work um, to see like yeah. where you're at and like look at your website. 
But like, I'd rather have you spend time reaching out to marketing agencies and becoming their go-to videographer than you actually spending a single time working on one client. Because all it takes, like we just signed on one marketing agency this past like six months. They probably generated like $15,000 worth of, of projects for us. And these are projects that like, we don't have to go out and look for, right? They're like, hey, we have a project. It's We have $4,000. Can you do it? Sure. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we have a thousand dollar one. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like, and that's all I do. And I tell them, listen, I will work with you on this, but I need you guys to be transparent with me. If you have a thousand dollar budget, I will make it work for a thousand dollars. But if you ever have a twenty thousand dollar budget, like I need you to tell me it's a twenty thousand dollar budget. Cause like, you know what I mean? And I talk clients all the time. It's like the whole buying a house thing. Like if you have twenty thousand dollars to, you know, well, we'll call it two hundred thousand to build a house and you only want to spend fifty, you're gonna get a fifty thousand dollar house. And then I tell them I'm not gonna keep all the money, but for a twenty thousand dollar project, you're gonna get a makeup artist the whole day. I'm gonna get fucking props, like I'm gonna go all out. Like I won't make that, but I need you guys to be transparent with me and I'll work with you guys as long as you work with me. So spend some time when on Google my business or just Google Maps and look up marketing agencies, advertisement agencies in your area. Area, whatever town that you're in followed by that and you start reaching out to them but with that reaching out to those agencies the same thing the agency that we signed on they found me they researched video production agencies in our area and like yo i like the brand videos are you, that you're doing you actually work with a lot of brands are doing this kind of stuff like how much would it be for a brand video and i was like normal brand videos are between like six to three thousand dollars depending on what goes into it they're like perfect let's look at some of your work let's see where you're at and you what? white label it rodrigo what you white label it your yeah, work so like, yeah and some clients are different like some clients don't care that we come in as task studios other clients i'm like yep i we are the video production part of so-and-so agency okay you know what i mean it all comes down to the client and like and that's the thing too and that's a whole other could be a whole other like video or, but like dealing with agencies are very different than dealing with clients and this is where i tell people like the beginning get a taste of it all deal with your 500 dollars projects deal with your thousand dollar projects learn like if you're yeah. having issues dealing with 500 dollars projects you're gonna have issues dealing with five thousand dollar projects you need to learn how to manage those at a small smaller scale so communication with bigger projects especially dealing with an agency is harder because here's what happens you're the creator you present the video to the agency the agency doesn't present it to the client to get feedback they're going to make their own internal notes and feedback send it to you you make those changes they see it again, then they send it to the client. So those are all things that I learned over, over time. It's like now when I work with agencies, I do 75% upfront. Like if I'm, if you're an agency, I need 75% upfront because I've worked with agencies in the past. The revision process is way longer and just me taking a 50% is not enough. Cause then what happens if the client doesn't like anything and doesn't want to pay? I'm left holding a fucking bag. So now it's like 75%. I also know that it's going to take them longer to give me feedback. So those are all like little things that you learn throughout that process of working with the agency. So like, yes, there's a plus side that you can work with one agency that might be sending you, you know, two to three clients a month, but you're also going to have to learn how to manage those two to three clients as well. What town are you in? I'm in Phoenix AZ. Honestly, if I was in Phoenix right now, I'd be doing everything possible to find out when Jacob Owens is doing any kind of work out there and fucking reaching out to do like free shit for him. Yeah, he's he's big, man. I mean, yeah, and I, I've seen some of his stuff too. It's just I feel like, yeah, I think a lot of people want to reach out to him and, and get in touch with them too. Dude, bro, I'm telling you, yeah, like and, and and why not, right? Like I got like I got to become friends with Chris though because of reaching out to somebody and like Chris is huge, right? Same thing. Like, I got to be on Gary V's book because of reaching out to somebody. But all I had to do, like I literally, I remember one of the I have like another video that I sent that I put out, but I remember going to LA a couple of years ago and um to have the message here. Yeah, I was literally like uh, I sent this it's uh this production company in LA. And I was like, hey Pat, my name's Drigo. I'm visiting from Florida. I'm in LA until Monday. Wanted to see if you needed any uh, if you needed an intern PA to work for free. If you have any projects going on that you need a PA, so you want to go coffee runs, pick a garbage after the shoot, just looking to learn. I'd be a fly in the wall. Either way, I appreciate it. And he goes, Well, that is dope. Please text me right now. And he sent me his number. I got to work on a music video for Rage Against the Machine. Like I first got there is very much of like, you know, I was just like the PA, whatever they needed. By the end of the shoot, he was like, yo, come here. He's like, hold this fucking red. Hold like it had like this, like, I forgot what kind of glass on it, but he's like, you're holding $150,000. So don't fucking drop. But I was like, all right, dope, man. But like, I saw how they did their like product. Like, how did they do their shot list? Right. How are they staging the the shots going? How are they working? All these things that like I never had access to, but putting mm -hmm. myself out there to like learn. 
it gave me like I learned a lot. Like I took so much out of that when I come when I got back home because I saw how a bigger company was operating bigger than me. So like a lot of people hit up Jacob, but like and I get this all the time, dude. I get people to hit me up and they're like, "Yo, I want to work for free, or free. I want to learn." And like I bring them on, and honestly, dude, like a lot of people tend to be a letdown. Like they want, like they believe in the hype of like I want to do this for free, or they're like they're like listen to the Gary V book of me and they'll reach out to me, but they don't fucking show up. Like it, like it, it like literally amazes me of how many people I've opened a door to and like they, they don't put out or something. What? Like they don't put out dude. Like they just, they just don't, don't show up. Like, you know, they either like oh. they get like, they get too content that they're on set with me. And like, you know, they're just like, if you're going to be on set, be on set 110%. If you're going to be on my set to be at 50%, if I got to tell you like, bro, like get off your phone. Like I need you to go. Like you should be oh. anticipating everything that you need. Like I'm not going to have you on. Like for, like I'm giving you clear instructions to do something and you just don't do it. Why am I going to bring you like, I don't want you to be one more thing to do on my list during the day. Or like, you know, be like, yo, I'm going to edit you this video. How many people have I brought on that are supposed to edit videos for me that like, because all I ask when people ask me to come on my shoot, be like, yo, if you're to come on my shoot, ask all you want. All I ask is that shoot a BTS video for me. I probably have gotten like two BTS videos from like 10 people that I brought on. Oh, dang. You know what I mean? Or yeah. stuff like that. Or be like, yo, I'm going to come on the day before the shoot. Hey, I can't come anymore. Like, I'm going to go out of town. I'm like, I'm going to a concert. Cool, bro. Have fun. Oh, you don't invite me on sets anymore. Why would I? <laughs> Why? Uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to keep moving on. Like, I'll bring on somebody else. And like, I learned this from Gary too. Like, it's how he's like a higher, quick, fire, faster. I'm that like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's no bad blood. It's cool. It's just like, I'm not going to bring you on anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to like, I'll give you an opportunity yeah. and, and that's it. But if you're not going to show up, then there's nothing else about it. No, that's good stuff, man. I mean, I'm going I'm to keep that in mind. I have some people uh, I know that are in Phoenix that I, I've had in mind for a while too. But yeah, same thing like that. I got to reach out to them. And I have, um, but you know, maybe sometimes they just forget. So I got to follow People up. get busy. Like yeah. there's some people that like, it took me a while and I'll just be like, and I'll just message them again. I'm like, yo dude, I know you've been busy. Shit happens. Just want to let you know my offer is still on the table. If you ever need somebody to PA or like you need an extra in the shoot, you save my number, hit me up. If I'm available, I'll love to help. Simple as that. People get like, and I get it too. Like people hit me up and I always forget. And they're like, oh, I didn't. like there's situations. And mm -hmm. like, and as you get busy, like things get busy around you too. So like people will forget. So like this sort of reminder is not bad. Like, but I had one dude that was like, bro, like I put out a thing and he's like, he's like, why don't you ever hit me up? I'm like, dude, I invited you out three times and you build on me three times. I'm not going to invite you to come out in the shoot again. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? So yeah. just don't don't be that guy. Yeah, I think people got to realize, man, that it, it doesn't, you know, you, you've worked hard to get where you are and like it costs something, right? And like for them to want to not take that opportunity, like the fact that you respond to my messages and like I, I sent I sent you like, I don't know, maybe five questions. You know, there's some people who you ask them one question, they don't even look at that. They don't respond to that. Mm -hmm. so it is how it is right and we gotta yeah. take our uh all right let's see your website what did you build your website on uh, this was on squarespace cool i fuck with squarespace some people don't but i do uh welcome to how do you say your last name uh quayar 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 welcome to quayar production help brand businesses offload their content creation needs what does offload mean um so you know like i i see some people say some business owners say like oh we want to you know make more content that's kind of how i look at it it's like they don't have to create the content i'll do it for them so i think that's one of those things of like there's a really i don't know if you've it's probably in another video that i made but it's uh to building a story brand i always forget i know i should have saved this one building he has a so I'm part of this, but he has a different one that is oh right here. So go here. Like, so he has like a mini series of like, he'll send you like three videos or five minutes each, but he talked a lot about clarifying your message and stuff like that. And it's one of those things, like if you ever have to explain what a word or something is to a, like a business owner or to anyone, you're leaving it off, like, you know, too much interpretation for them to try to figure that out. But so far, everything looks clean here. Like it does look professional when I first get here. Um, we help. We help brands and businesses offload their content creation needs. Um, view production backed by strategy. I like that. See, like honestly, I like this probably like this better up here than do anything like with this. I'd put what it is underneath here. So I know yeah. what I'm about to watch. Like brand video, 
promo, whatever it is. Do anything I'd say. You don't have your phone. Yeah, I actually, I was trying to get a hold of you to change the call earlier. You don't have your phone number anywhere here. I know, man. It's just, uh, I took it down because I've been getting a lot of like, like spam. I think maybe mm -hmm. I got to get like a business phone number or something and then put that out too. For a very long time, I was using, oh, do I still have it on my phone? You use like an app or something? I was using, I think it was called Sideline. Was it Sideline? Yeah, I was using Sideline for a little bit. Um, that worked pretty well. The only thing was like, I couldn't get like, it was pretty much, it was like an Android. Like, you know, you're not going to get like, you know, it was hard for me to like send videos and photos, but if anyone was calling that line, it would ring through the app. And I just know that if it was ringing, if it was showing up green on my phone, it was ringing because it was a business number oh, and nice. I would answer it. Anything else that came to my personal line, I just wouldn't pick it up. But right now, like it's one of the biggest things. It's just like, if you're trying to get, if you're not getting enough business and you know, have your phone number up here it's just like like how much opportunity are you leaving and another another thing that you could do is i have it in here kind of analysis right here um do not call registry just put your number on here i do this like every year beginning of the year i put my number in here like it's not gonna stop all the phone calls but it will do a little bit like it will it will slow them down do something right all right yeah, yeah man I'll do that. No, that's slow. Do you want, so do you want to do photos or you're going to do videos? I, I think, man, like my, main, my main thing is video. It's just that sometimes I do get, you know, like this mechanic, right? And they want like six shots. It's something kind of like, uh, like, okay, you want to add that on? And I guess that's one of the questions I had, right? When I, when I wanted to talk to you is like, you're doing all these different uh, services, but I, I mostly see video on your website. Yeah, I, I guess I was just like, I'm a little, I, I, I kind of wonder too, because in our BNI group, you know, you can only fill one position and I'm the videographer there mm -hmm. and we have someone who's the photographer. And so like, I'm always like, oh man, if like a, a headshot comes my way, I'm like, should I refer that? Should I keep that for my own business? I mean, genuinely though, I do want to be known just for video, but you know, like sometimes you got to pay the bill. So like, oh, I feel you, bro. Yeah. I mean, I've done plenty of jobs that like I've done the headshots because like I needed the money that month. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I wouldn't be discouraged of it, but just say, if you want to be known, honestly, like I would remove these icons like the more icons and things you have up here the more different places your clients could go so like honestly the only place all my clients to go to is here like i want them to contact me okay. like i don't care if they're anywhere else so if you want if you want to be known for videos i make videos closer to your home page than photos is you know what i mean yeah I'll put, okay you have something here dope mm, photographer. honestly i'll probably move this up just so i can know who am i like um who am i talking like who who is it behind the brand you know what I mean? And then the other thing too, is when you're writing this copy, try to figure out, I guess, like if you go to my, like I rewrote it a little bit, try to figure out who's that you're talking to. Like, what is it that you haven't been able to, cause like, I feel like you already wrote about this somewhere else in your page. Yeah. The whole so, page just, yeah. Yeah. So like, what is it? What else, what else can you talk about here that will really resonate with the person that is coming to your website, which makes it easier, right? Because if you're like only special and like the reason I retook off, like all the other things from my website was because they made it, it made it so much easier to just talk to one person. Like, so like when I run, when I was running ads for my business, for the dentist stuff, like we have a landing page here that is just for dentists, dental videos. And it's like, it made it so much easier, right? High quality dental marketing videos, great practice by taking control of your content strategy, stand out, connect with patients, great practice. So what made it really easy about this was every time when we talked about like all this sales copy on here, just talks about your patient, your practice. And these are all, you know, industry terms that a dentist would relate to. So if a dentist came here and they just went to my regular website, like here, we're talking about corporate training videos, interviews, TV commercials, brand, you know what I mean? It loses that niche ability of yeah. it being specifically targeted to them. Now, on top of that, when I was trying to do photos, videos, social media marketing, I'm like talking to like a bunch of different people, like pretty much trying to just cast a net to lend anybody that wasn't getting anywhere. So yeah. for us, like we're like, okay, let's be more focused on like that corporate, like we could be your, your go-to corporate thing. And then like we started doing this, just as kind of an experiment to like see what that was going to be like running ads for, for dentists. Right. But you do wedding videos. We do. And I did something like, and then for that, I literally went and I made another website that's called Tasca weddings that 
all you oh. see here yeah. is wedding stuff because I, I literally talk to like like when i don't close a deal i'm all about like yo why like hey like what can we do better and a client told me like yeah like you know we're looking for something very corporate and like i started doing wedding videos and i was like okay cool so i took all the weddings videos off and then like i talked to bride i was like hey like you know just curious or i was trying to get better and she's like, well, I saw you did corporate stuff. I'm really looking for somebody that only does wedding mm -hmm. videos. So I was like, all right, simple right. problem. Like Tosca's videos, Tosca weddings. You guys don't even know each other exists. You got a like a social media for all that too, or just a yep. website? Um, social media for it, barely use it. I don't even think I know. Honestly, like with this, like I've raised, like I really just raised my rates again. I think like our small package is six like three thousand for two minute video and like six hour coverage and then our high package is like yeah that's seven sixty five hundred dollars for ten hours of coverage and an eight to ten minute video and literally like every like quarter i've been raising it because like we're still getting booked for a couple of them and i just mm -hmm. don't want to do weddings but if you throw enough like the whole thing everybody has a price like if you throw me enough money like i will shoot your wedding i don't want to if you're willing to pay for it, like I would do it. Like with these, I think like we uploaded these on like the Tasca Studios um page. And I think we started moving towards like putting a lot of these videos on um like Vimeo just so the Tasca Studios. I didn't want somebody to go to the Tasca Studios and then take the wedding videos. Oh, what remember. what makes you not want to do weddings, man? Honestly, dude, it was just like I just kind of got I kind of got over them um like I think they're cool like I had fun but like it gets to a point that like all of them were just the same to me like yeah beginning middle end like a different couple and this and that and like they're not bad I just I don't know for me I just got to a point that I was just like ah, I don't really care about it I like I don't care about weddings anymore I see that um, um when you started though were you doing a lot of weddings it was a mix it wasn't a lot but like here's what I tell you I think mm. everybody should do weddings because weddings are weddings are gonna teach you to be fast. Yeah. Weddings are gonna teach you to be able to trouble troubles yeah. troubleshoot. Like, troubleshoot. Thank you. Yeah. Troubleshoot problems that you normally wouldn't have to deal with. But and those are all the things that when you actually go to like deal with the business or any kind of other thing, like you're already gonna have like a little bit of a, a, an edge above that because like you already if you can control yourself and you can master a consider like stressful situation, you could do anything in a controlled environment, right? And the wedding teaches you to be fast. It's going to teach you to like, it, it teaches you to experience a lot of different scenarios that you normally wouldn't get to do in a business. So like with weddings, you're going to learn about audio and you're going to fuck up audio a lot. Always have backup audio when you're doing weddings. You're going to learn about using your gimbal and tracking people and walking and things that normally you don't get a chance to do a lot with a business owner. You're going to learn about shooting in low light. How far can you push your camera? So like doing weddings in the beginning, it's going to give you a lot of credibility on like learning stuff that you normally don't get a chance. Cause like if you're shooting an interview in an office, your lighting conditions and audio, all these things are necessarily going to be the same throughout the whole shoot. You start wedding at noon, you're dealing with fucking bright sunlight and you're like fucking cranking your shutter or you're like, you know, putting uh ND filter if you have one on, but you're learning all these different types of environments to shoot. By the end of the night, it's pitch dark outside. How are you lighting the couple? Where are you putting your lights? How are you going to see them? So like in one day of filming a wedding, you can experience like three to four different like atmospheres for you to film in. I think that gives you a lot of, you know, credibility and knowledge and understanding your gear going back to look at the footage you're like oh i could have done this better oh i don't like how the light shifted or like the white balance shifted here because of these lights you start learning about all those things when you're reviewing that so i think for everybody like in my first weddings i did i shot three of my best friends weddings is how i actually got into weddings one was like i just i literally had my camera for like three or four months like i just went to i went to somebody's wedding um and i just like made them like a quick like one and a half minute video and they like they loved it the next one was like my best friend's wedding there was like a two minute video and i have them up on i think on on our, our on the other website and like i got a joy out of it when i was doing it for my friends like being able to be like capture your friends like you know the happiest moment of their life and be able to capture that and deliver it to them and they're like don't someone will call me and be like dude just watch your wedding video again like thank you you know what i mean like that's something very special that you could do for for a couple but it gets to a point too like you know you do it for other couples and it's like okay now i'm just doing it for the money right so for me it's like i already have my hands in so many pots in between like task studios trying to do you know youtube and like trying to get like an online business going like adding more stuff on my plate just pulled away from everything else i think that was the other big shift for me for like not wanting to do weddings it's not that i don't like doing weddings but it's like um it came down to like 
the more things you add on your plate for you to do, the less good you get at everything. Like, yes, you might become knowledgeable at a lot of different things. But like at that point, I was like, what are the things that matter to me the most? And just weddings wasn't one of them. No, I feel like I'm kind of the same, man. I That's why I want to focus on this corporate commercial route. I feel like I have more, I don't know, interest, more passion for making those commercials or interviews compared to a wedding. Um, you know, but again, that's money, right? So mm-hmm. I'm willing to take those on. But I think my main focus, I wanted to come from that corporate work. So yeah, I guess. So what you recommend then is reach out to these agencies rather than one-off clients. That's what you're thinking. Yeah. I mean, especially like, let me look at some of your videos. What's your favorite, what's your favorite video that you've done? Like, what do you think is your best work? You know, interview wise, the, uh, Jonathan Santiago or, you know, like, uh, brand story wise, I would say the, uh, the MMA gen for my two solid ones. I'm Jonathan Santiago. I'm one of the owners of ambassador landscaping. We're located in Phoenix, Arizona. So we do a number of landscaping services. We do maintenance, we do irrigation work, lighting work, planting, fertilizing, lawn care, weed control, almost everything. We actually started in 2009, say just about 10 years. Yeah, I started off with me and my dad. While I was in school, he would work. And then whenever I had time, I would go help him out. He would just wake me up in the morning, say, hey, we're going to work. And you know, nothing much I could do about it, I'd just go. And that's how it started. So as time progressed, we just started growing little by little. You know, we get a lot of clients, they spend a lot of money in getting a design and getting a bunch of plants in, a bunch of lights in. They spend a lot of money, they invest in their homes and You know, they hire a company and they don't take care of the property. They lose a lot of plants. They have issues with, you know, irrigation, lighting. And I'd say the number one thing we do is we protect their investment. We obviously. So one thing I would say about this video, if I was you, I would actually go get footage of him and his team working. I would, I would re-edit this video. Like I think like you can literally keep the same video, get B-roll shots of them working to add on here because like i mean me i know that like doing shots that you have of him is this everything else is just stock footage right yeah so like i rather have like i rather see you make because like i think the outline for your story is good but for me for like if i was looking for you to produce something for me i'd want to see more of like him working on different types of houses his team kind of doing stuff that would really sell this video business card to me yeah i uh that was my plan but i think they just kind of struggled to get some some clients um i think a lot of them just didn't want their houses like on video Mm. so it was like a bit of both so i ended up having to kind of like compromise with like stock footage but the uh the mma one is more so like that like it's them and they're okay probably more more exciting too i would say man as long as this one too welcome to tnt mma training center i'm scott tannenbaum owner and head instructor. This is our story. The thing our students love the most about TNT MMA is our focus on fun, practical self-defense. Our supportive, family-friendly training center offers fitness and martial arts classes for students of all ages and skill levels, including those who have never done it before. Our all-access membership allows you and your child to train as frequently as they want and in the class they are most interested in. Nogi Adult Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Nogi Youth Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, and Power Tone. We have options for everyone. Our Nogi Youth Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and MMA program is designed to build your child's confidence while also encouraging a healthy lifestyle through fitness. These classes guide students through fundamental techniques and proper self-control. We feel it is important to emphasize leadership, respect, and safety. I feel like this is more of a, I feel like this fits more of a video business card versus a brand story like i think more of like pure in a sense of um because like this really tells me like what they offer and what what exactly as they do i think if it was a brand story video it would fall more into like um like the story like behind the guy and like the gym that he started and all that that to me is like 
And that's when you like upsaw them, like, hey, we could do your video business card and a brand story for something like that. But you're like, good, good composition, like lighting looks good. Where did you get the audio from? Uh, I hired a guy. I, you know, I made the script. I had him read over it. And then, yeah, he just read over it and uh, I put it in the video. Dope. And then like some of the other ones are like promotional videos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's like for a chef. He does a uh, catering and meal prep. So like something else that I would do that we started doing was um so like when you're reaching out to companies, that's something else we did here. We did like a case study that talks about like the client overview challenge solution. So with the MMA one, if you ever work with the other MMA gym, yeah, you'd make a page on here, like case studies, put brand story video and then the promotional video into one. So you could talk about how you use the promotional video to drive leads which send them to their video on the home page and then i'll do like screenshots of their home page with the video on there to kind of show people like this is what it could be for you so when you reach out to a gym you're like hey check out this link this is some work we did for tnt mma and then they have literally a one page brochure that talks about like you know like here we talked about they had 28 shares over 100 likes within the first month 3,000 views like they joke they still joke around with us like we still do work with them that they tell us that their first video like broke their internet because like they've never had that nice. many um like likes and stuff like that and then the same thing working with him i went back a couple of different times oh do i have it here maybe it's in a dental one and there's like so much shit i need to do on my own website but I had him do a, uh, I went back to the COVID-19 video for him. And then he, I just got him to like read off a script and uh, he made me like a little uh, testimonial video. Let me see if I have it here. Hey, I'm right. The other thing too, if you ever had a shoot, like I did this in the back end of a client shoot, like I booked a studio for a client and then like I went and shot this. As soon as we finished shooting the client, I made this video for myself and I've done this for like two other projects. I did that one. I did want to ask you about that, man. Like how, you know, from your experience, what have you learned kind of like the right way um, to work with business owners? Cause I have heard you talk about how, like, if you want to, you know, successful ones, extremely successful ones, if you want to get in touch with them, you said like send an email at like 6 AM or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Cause they're like super busy. So I was kind of wondering, you know, what's your process do you come in like i'm assuming you kind of have the setup ready before they they're they're there and like you have the script and all that i have this i have the email set i scheduled the email because oh. i don't know what you're using for your uh like to send out emails and stuff but like i use gmail or google and i just schedule my email for 6 15 in the morning okay. and i just send it out to them and then I'll, like it'll tell me like um you can still see my screen yeah, I've used a HubSpot and, you know, Gmail. Um, okay, so you know how it works. So then, like, you know, it would tell yeah, me, like, um, seven times. This guy, like, they're working a project, like, open the email 28 times. So, like, I know that they're clicking on my email. Oh, yeah, so, like, I did this one, which I haven't posted it yet. Because, like, right now, I'm, I'm trying to find a web developer because we just moved our website over to, um, what is it called? Webflow. Okay. Because, like, my website was getting so heavy with video. That like our performance wasn't that well and my market is getting more competitive that like everybody else is doing their websites so i'm like um oh, what's the other one no web flow it's squarespace what's the big one um i forgot what the other big one that a lot of people use their websites for so i just switched over here but looking to start a video project and you're probably wondering what are the steps number one step and the first thing you should do fill out the form below or give us a call and we'll get the ball rolling from there after we have our discovery call We'll send you a proposal. This proposal will outline the terms of the service that we're providing you along with the video. When the proposal is signed, we'll then do a pre production So like, you know, I shot all these videos on the back end of a client project. Mm -hmm. um, so, because like, I was like, you want to get crafty, right? In terms of social media, man, or, you know, kind of like all the marketing investments you've had, what's giving you the best return? SEO. SEO on your website? SEO on your website. Number one thing, do you have a Google My Business listing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you on uh, Bing and Yelp? Oh, perfect. Great. Got any reviews? Uh, Yelp. I I'm on Yelp, but I haven't got any reviews on there. Um, not on Bing yet. Need to get on there. You know, I'll, I'll ask people too. Hey, can you get leave a review if you like my services, things like that? Yeah, perfect. You're replying to them. There's only one of them. I see that you need to reply to. 
Okay. It's super important. And then I'll spend time. Um, but same thing here. Like you're like to me, you're not having a phone number on here. Like you're leaving so much money on the table. Um, okay. And I, uh, I like understand. And like I also spend time like I learn a lot about like the whole re and like the fact that this is here already helps a lot. Um, I think it's your schema. But production offers more than just professional reproduction. And that's what I tell people, like, I, I spend more time learning about marketing than I do about video production nowadays in the sense of, like, how to write compelling copy. Like, how can I rewrite this into as few as many words as possible that's optimized for, like, uh, SEO? So I think ours, and that's something we got it like, with Squarespace, I saw that yours needs this. Like right now, Maya says video production company, West Palm Beach and Pompano Beach, right? Your just says your last name production. Doesn't tell me what town it's at or anything like that. And that's an easy fix on. Um... I think that's the video tab. I think when it's home, it might, I think it's different. No, I, th I think it was the same thing before I, I saw when we first thought we came in. I looked oh. at that. Okay. Um, but it's the same thing, like spending a little bit of time, like how to optimize, like literally go to YouTube, how to optimize my Squarespace website for seo those are like the little things that really helped us because i think right now we're ranking the same thing like our videos west palm beach pompano beach you know what i mean like we're, we have words throughout our um our website i don't like we're not ranking top but like we're we're up mm -hmm. there so lemon light okay so we're in the number we're within the four you know what i mean that's good so so right here do you know what this is called uh no so they call this a google snack pack Okay. So, and right now you can see Lemon Light is running ads on here. They're, they're a pretty big company. They're based, they're like all over the United States, but like right now I'm ready competing against Lemon Light, Quick Frame and whatever the name of this company is. Comar is another really big one. That's my buddy's one. That's another big one. So like right now, like that's the reason like we're working on our SEO because like right now for other than us showing up in a snack pack and that would change a lot for a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. I don't even think we're in the top. Yeah, so I mean, we're not even on the top. Okay, so we're, we're number number three page at the bottom. Like no one's going to come here and find me here, right? So that's yeah. why like spending time learning about how to optimize your Google My Listing for the snack pack is really important. And then I think we rank for Pompano Beach. But my biggest clients I've gotten have come from this. Like I've gotten, like I've gotten some clients from social media, but it's like they saw my work through like somebody I did work for, and like it got shared, and like they reached out to me. And they normally were like lower end like clients, but like the clients that have me flying around like United States right now, they mm -hmm. found me like so we're number one on this one for this other town and then you know, we're just falling in the ranks i haven't done that's the same thing like i've been slipping on like this part of my business with like just being busy so we're number two on or number one two or number three in the number two page we used to be number one and sometimes it changes too based on like if you put video production first and then you put the town yeah, yeah. it fluctuate but we're still number one there and so we're on the number one page here, but we're at the bottom, right? Like we keep dropping. And then it sucks too, because then you're competing, we're competing against Yelp, which has a huge database. Website's huge. Manta is another huge one. Yellow pages, Thumbtack, Product. Like these are all like huge database companies that we're fighting to beat. So like the best way to do this is really optimizing your website, putting out like content with like keywords and things like that that Google is going to find your website relevant to, to then want to push it back up. Cause like right now I'm like the only, I'm the only real business listed on here. So like for any, so like think about the user experience, right? Any other business owner that wants to like search as this, you can first somebody here, they can either go on the snack pack, which most people do, or they need to come on production hub. And then from production hub, they need to like go through here to like find somebody and then to like request a quote or contact, like how many steps they just have to go through to find somebody. So like, think about that. So on top of that, let's say they go through that, they get to your website now and you don't have a phone number. What are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, They're going to yeah. click out, go through the whole <laughs> process again. The first person that they click on next that has a phone number, they're like, yo, we need a video done. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like, you got to think about your customers like, you know, the, their journey, their journey process. Okay. So when you do a video for a client, do you distribute it 
kind of like organically for them? Is that included or do you just deliver the asset? In the beginning, depends on the client. There's some clients that I don't do it for because they're pain in the ass. And I usually get a gauge of like, there's a video that I got to, should be working on right now. They're like, I'm just delivering them the video. I'm not going to ask them for a review and we're done. I want to be like, because like right now my goal, I want to hit $200,000 in sales by the end of the year. So like mm -hmm. I'm taking on more projects. Like I'm taking on like a thousand dollar projects and two thousand dollar projects that I normally wouldn't do because I'm trying to reach this goal. And some of those clients are the ones that are the worst ones to work with. Like my five thousand dollar clients, I'm like, like literally when I'm flying to like New York, they're literally paying me five thousand dollars for a day to go film for three hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's and I'm done. Give them the footage in Dropbox. The fifteen hundred dollar client I got to work on the video for now. Like we delivered two versions of the video. He finally gets back to me that the video that we edited wasn't exactly what they're looking for because he didn't get clarification for his boss. Now he wants to know if I could do another version for free because they don't have any more budget. I'm like, dude, like I didn't mm -hmm. even want to work. Like my original price is twenty two hundred for this. I worked the deal with you for fifteen hundred. Now you want a third video? I'm just like, I want to get this project over with and move on with my life. You know what I mean? It's just so draining that I'm just like, but those are the things. The smaller end projects tend to be the more the ones that come with the more headaches more demanding and like want more stuff yeah so it just depends yeah. on the client then if you yeah, it really depends on the client because um yeah i saw the you actually uh, i didn't watch it all but i saw you posted like how you do the seo for youtube learn that so, so that part you you only do it for a certain client so if i like what might so like with the brand videos like the brand story videos or like the business profile videos i'll do that as part of my sales pitch so like if, he, if i know because like here's the thing like if I tell a client that I'm like, yo, do me a favor, go to YouTube right now and type in Jupiter Farms Dentist or go and type in Stuart Dentist. Like, what do you see? And they'll be like, oh, Palms Dental Care, Riverbend Dentistry. Those are both my clients. You know, it's something really interesting. They'd be like, what? Did you know that YouTube's the world's second largest search engine? They're like, oh, really? I'm like, and guess who owns that? They're like, who? I'm like, Google. So by us putting a keyword centric video on YouTube ranked number one. And then we add that to your website. It actually helps you boost your Google ranking as well for SEO purposes. Like tell me what else you're doing this year that could do that for you. There's nothing else you're doing this year. So when are we getting started? You know what I mean? It's a different conversation. I, at this point, they didn't talk about what lighting I'm using. They didn't talk about what camera I have. None of that mattered. You know what I mean? It comes down to like, you want business results? You want that phone to ring? I'm going to help you make that phone ring, but it's going to be $5,000. You only have $3,500? We could do a one minute video and I'll still upload it and optimize it for you. You know what I mean? Like if you can't meet me at my five, we'll meet somewhere else. You know what I mean? But you're not going to get that full, you're not going to get the full package. I did just have a couple more questions. Yeah. Uh, Solver, bro. Um, but yeah, I just kind of want to go through them because they're kind of like the main ones I was really thinking about. So yeah, man, are you in any networking groups? Kind of like, do you do any networking? Is that part of your strategy? The only networking I have right no. So no, I'm not doing any networking right now. The only networking I have is with there's another content creator, um, my friend Jana, which unfortunately just got her Instagram account hacked. Um, oh. but she's the only person that I really network with, and it's the same situation. She's like a producer and she does videos and like she does a lot of networking herself. And I just try to like be her go-to guy. Like I do projects for 500 bucks for her that, you know, like as long as I'm not, if I have nothing else to do and the same thing, like I have another buddy of mine that like, I start telling him like, yo, if you have a shoot and you need me, pay me three. Like if I just have to show up, pay me 350 for the day, I'll DP or I'll direct their commercial for you. Like I'm here to help you out. When you get those bigger projects, hook me up. As long as I got nothing else to do, like I got you. So the same thing with her, I'll network with her and do the same thing for her. So when she has these bigger jobs, she's like, yo, I got this project. I have 4,000 for you for a day. Can you do it? Fuck yeah, I can do it for 4,000 for a day. Like, what do you need? You know what I mean? I'll bring my little crew with me too. So like, I'll network with people the network within the network that I want to be in. For me to spend that time like networking with people and like putting all these other leads, I rather focus my energy on highly qualified people that already know that that transaction process is gonna gonna happen a lot faster. Right. So like if Jenna's already talking to people and I'm just grabbing lunch with Jenna and like, you know, I'm making sure to meet Jenna on a good basis. She's out there networking. I don't have to go talk to 10 people because Jenna's going to do that. The same thing before, like we were working with the, the local news station here. Same thing. I'll go out and eat lunch with one of the guys two times, like every two weeks. Like, yo, Dylan, let's grab lunch. What, what, do, what projects are you working on? And then like once in a while, they have like clients who hit me up. Like they wanted a TV commercial, but like I just didn't want to do the TV commercial. I'm like, you guys got to call Dylan. He's your guy. If you guys want to air, like we can't take on this project, but like, let me just help you out. 
or I'll see somebody advertising and be like, yo, Dylan, I saw this person was like running ads over here on social media. You should reach out to him, see if they want to do a TV spot. So those are the kind of people I network with. But to go like to a group, yeah, to like sit around and like you got to get them leads and this, I'm like, I don't got time for that. Like, you know, I mean, you're better off, like you're better off figuring out like uh like your SEO. Let me see where you are in. Yeah, because that was my kind of thing. It's like, I, it, you know, you wonder, you're like, is this the best use of my time? Or should I just do like, you know, go, go out, go reach out to these agencies and work, work on the website rather than going to all these different groups and events? You know, I guess you just kind of, you just got to ask and see, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's what I wanted to see what your perspective was on that. The biggest thing for you right now that, that you need to do is figure out how much money do you need to make every month to survive and pay your bills? Like that's going to be number one from there. You need to figure like you, like your two biggest thing you need to figure out right now is how much money you need to make. What is your hourly rate? So like, doesn't matter what kind of project comes in now, if it's one hour and you started out your one hour at 125, Hey, our minimum is 250 for one hour. You know what I mean? Like, and you need to start like, and that's it. Like, there's no questions if about, Oh, I, I need a, a 20. I just need 20 minute video. Cool. It's still to minimum to like minimum two hours. We still got to come out. We still got to prep. It doesn't matter. Like that's going to be the first thing for, for you, but you also got to figure out like how much money you need to make to survive every month. And you just got to work backwards from that. So if it's like, like for me, I think when we and when I was starting out to live in my mom's house, I think like I needed to make like 800 bucks a month to survive, but I was like living at home. It's like literally sleeping on an air mattress in my sister's room. Yeah. Like my car was like, I think I just finished paying off my car. I just had like insurance and like gas and like just like random shit, right? 800 bucks. So I was like, if I could do two projects at $400, I'm good. So like I would hustle to get to, to those two projects, right? And eventually like I got more and like, okay, I want $500 now. And I got more confident. Um, And that's the other thing too, I was having to call somebody else. Just like, if you're struggling to like get, and I don't know how many free videos you've done or like what the sales process is, but like if you can't get somebody to commit for you to do a free video for like, how are you going to get somebody to pay you a thousand dollars for it? You know what I mean? Like you got to be able to overcome that. And I heard this other guy, I've got his name on Instagram, but he's like a salesperson and like a lot of, and I used to get discouraged with this too. It's like, you know, you hear that no, the first no, you hear the second no, but like you're a server, right? If you were waiting at a table and you came up to me and you're like, yo, you want dessert? We got this tiramisu, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, nah, I'm good. I don't want dessert today. Like, all right, cool. You didn't, you don't second guess it. Like, fuck the guy told me, no, you go to the next table. You guys want dessert? Yeah, we want dessert. Next one. No, yes. But you know what I mean? It keeps going. So look at it like that. Like imagine that every time, every time you talk to a business owner, talk to them about video, you're just offering them dessert. The dessert's still good. You know what I mean? Just the dessert might not be for that person. So don't let that no, like, you no, know, get you down in that sense. Like my main takeaway then is to focus on like, yeah, those agencies doing free work for the people, you know, who, who have something est established out here. Um, Cause yeah, I think there's just a lot of uh, like doubt from the whole networking thing. I'm like, dang, is that the Based right way? Phoenix, I'm stupid. I right, hear it is. No, no music uh, video. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I used to spell it with the E first, um, but it's the O, and then you get it. That's how it is. Uh, do you know who any of these people are? Yeah, those those guys are pretty pretty big in the area. I mean, DMac, that's that's a pretty big one. I think they're kind of like one of the top ones here. 10 years in business, 35 plus years in business. Dude, like i will get in the radar and be like, yo, I want to work for you guys. Like I want a PA. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, they're killing it. Like number one on the snack pack, number one on here, like these people are eating up the competition on uh, spectrum, beer claw. Point. It's funny how there's less, like you saw how my was so packed with, all those big name agencies and here you have like an actual like a lot more production companies oh yeah yeah i think that's it's funny how the market changes like that do you know where you end up in the google listing do i know where i end up yeah nah I, i'm pretty sure i don't rank high man i uh i haven't really invested in the seo for the website on squarespace um yeah, and I think, and I think that's like, and those are the things that you could do for free. Like, so the reason I learned about all this SEO stuff is when I moved, because 
it's like a lot of, like I learned a lot of things like retrospect within the like, growing my business. Like when I was, when I left New York city, like I was busy. Like I remember I turned down a job. I turned down like a full-time job working for this marketing agency for like $75,000 a year because like my phone was like blowing up. Like as I'm doing an interview with this like business, like my phone rang like three times for a job. And I was like, I got like too confident and cocky that I was like, I was like, yo, fuck this. I'm leaving New York. I'm going to go to like, I'm going to go to Florida and be this fucking hot shot. Yeah, yeah. When I got back to Florida, I didn't realize that the reason I was so busy in New York was because of the group of people that I was around and how like everybody was doing stuff. And like New York, there's a market for video. Like we're in New York City. There's always an event. People needed stuff captured. Like I was working with, it's like the same thing in New York. I was working with one magazine, Hope Living. And with Hope Living, I like did like 10 projects with them. Like we did something with like Swiss Beats, like other stuff with like uh Seth Rogan, like all these different people. And like they kept me busy. Then I worked with another magazine and that kept me busy. And then I worked with like a uh, um an event company and they always had events, right? So like I didn't think about the fact there was like three clients giving me all my business. When I moved to Florida, I'm like, why is my phone not ringing? Like I was like, because I, I did the Google My Business thing, I listed all that. I'm like, why don't I show up? Like, why is my phone not ringing? And then, like, I started learning about the SEO stuff because I reached out to somebody. I was like, hey, how much do you do my website? They're like, $5,000. I was like, all right, cool. I was like, well, let me Google this real quick. How do I figure this out? And I started learning about it. And luckily for me, it happened within six months. Are you within, like, a certain area within Phoenix? Yeah, I'm, like, North Phoenix. So by the 101 and, like, the 51. What is that? Is it, like, a certain thing that it's called, like, that area? Like, right there where your cursor's at? Like, right where it was? Like, pretty much over there. So but here? I'll yeah, so like I'll drive around though, um, if I need to go to like other places. So we're so like so that's North North Scottsdale. So like, what is your are you Paradise Valley? I'm like like by Desert Ridge where it says Mina Video Production. I'm like in that area. So what is this area called? That's like North Phoenix. Um, yeah, pretty much like North Phoenix. It's a like a big land. See, Lemon Light pops up here too, like because like mm-hmm. I compete against them all the time because like they are like they're they're a really big company and they're like ranking all over the place. But uh, what they do, they literally I've gotten in contact with them, but they pretty much hire. They're like almost they're almost two times as expensive as me, but they hire all my competition to do their videos because pretty much all they do, like they're not a production company. That's what pisses me off. That they're just an agency that hires other videographers to come in and do all their videos for them, which is a way to do it. It's how you scale because like if you don't have to go out and shoot anything like I was telling you about, like you can work on like 10 projects at once. But if you're working and shooting those projects, doing this, like all those things, you can only work on one project at a time. So like this is like in your situation, like something else I'll do is like DMAC Productions. Let's, what the f***? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. One ager, da, 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 da. Right. Copy. Uh, Uber suggest.com. Organic monthly traffic. Fucking, that's a lot of traffic. So like right here, these are all keywords if I was you. And I'll send you this video so you can just rewatch the video. You can do a screenshot now. You got to start using these keywords within your website to start ranking. So I, so that's the thing. Like I'm really big like in the past few days to talk about like reverse engineering stuff. So like let's see difficulty. So I mean Phoenix Video Production is like pretty good traffic, right? 590 traffic things, words per, per month volume. Difficulty 30, that's pretty good. So like, you know, these are the, the things that I'll start using to create a um, like blog articles and like just content around my website to, to help it start ranking. Like, honestly, dude, as like if you, uh, Ruan Marino is a really good person on YouTube. Like you watch a couple of his videos. Like when you have the understanding of like how SEO works, what Google's looking for, it's honestly not that complicated. Ruan Marino. 20 SEO suggestions for a brand new website. Number one, use Uber suggests to find. Oh, look at that. Fucking first thing he recommends is the first thing that we did. Right. So okay. like it's it's like these little things that like spend like the next couple of days or the rest of the week. Watch this one, this video stuff and just taking notes. It's not that complicated. The best thing I'll tell you, though, is create a spreadsheet with like this information. So like for me, I was get skeptical on a show like some of this stuff. Cause like I have a uh, people that watch my channel that are local and they're like competing against me and they watch my shit. And we go, I saw your video. I'm like, fuck man. I was like, there's only so much that I can show now because like my, literally my competitors are watching my shit, but you know, I'll just put kind of like the same thing that they put here, like volume position, like SEO difficulty. 
those are just kind of things that like i want to have an idea of um you know where are they ranking so when i look at it i'm like okay which ones are worth the you know the hassles to go for and all of that and you have like keyword ideas so is green like worth it and yellow is not you know that i mean i guess you could say that um it's not that it's not worth it right because you need because you also need like when you learn more about the seo stuff you're going to get a better idea of it because you need a mix of things right because if you just have a bunch of easy to rank keywords where some of them don't get a lot of traffic then google's gonna be like yo what's up with the site like they're, like there's something fishy about it right and like what happens like in the beginning of this with like seo when it was first getting around people were doing this thing called keyword stuffing which still happens that like literally people would be like Phoenix City Production, Phoenix City Production, Phoenix City Production, like everywhere possible to put that keyword on there. And Google caught on and like, okay, we're going to call this right. keyword stuffing. Uh, and then they're like, okay, if you're going to keyword stuff your site, we're going to penalize you for that. Yeah. I, uh, like a while back, man, I, I used to have WordPress and I would like, that's the that's one that's get more into ASU, SEO, but um, I, it got hacked. And I was like, dude, I don't want to deal with that again. So that's when I moved it to Squarespace. I, I love that it's just been simple. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's like missing a lot on the, uh, just the, the, the volume, right? And all the mm -hmm. organic search. But I, I see that, man. So here's like another video production company in Phoenix. So it was like, so like on the about us, it'd be like, if you're looking for a video production company in Phoenix, like I was just kind of, cause like, there were one of their, I forgot if it was called the Penguin Update or Panda, whatever one it was. Like, there's context to it. So, like, even though it says, like, if you could use the word companies, it's even better. But if you could write company, if you're looking for a video production company in Phoenix, you came to the right place. That's an organic way to use that keyword within your website. Okay. You know what I mean? But the okay. thing is, it's like, if you, if you get a list of all the keywords together and you can start looking at them, like, okay, how can I take these... 10 or 15 keywords and start writing copy on my website, which is going to make sense for not only the person reading it, but for Google to help me rank my website for, and I'll do the same thing. It's so like this one is ranking number one. I then I'll go like, I literally like I'll spend time researching as I'll go to the same thing. I'll go to the next person. And here's the best thing about this is the next time when you actually talk to a business owner, like the same thing. Like when I got into your website, the first thing I did, I went to go look at your, um, to see if you had a description there. I also look to see if your, if your site uh, had an SSL certificate. So when I come across a business owner and I'm like, yo, listen, like I saw your website, just like, I'm here to help. I love, like, I'm literally passionate about doing this, but I noticed that you have your copyright written for 2015. You might want to update. Also I saw that your meta description didn't list where your business does. And this is something that's a really easy fix for a lot of business owners. Normally it doesn't cost you anything, but I just want to put that in your radar. Um, you know, my name is Tony. If you're ever looking to do a video, I love to be your guy. I, I love to be your guy. Have a great day. That's so that's kind of like a value, kind of like give them yeah. value. And like, um, there's the other videos. I used to do these videos. Like this was, this is more of a long haul. Like, and I only did this for clients that were very like that. I that I could tell they were like very committed. Um, not committed, but like that I saw that like okay, if I work with like if I come after these clients. I know it's going to work out for me. So I made a YouTube channel called Top Business Reviews. 20 SEO suggestions for a brand new one. And this is how I got that first, uh, the first dentist client I got was through here. I went and I made Palm Dental. But literally it was like, you know, I made a little video with screenshots of the reviews. And then I ranked the video. Like I'll wait a couple of days, I'll rank the video and then be like, be like, Hey, Dr. Comrie, love what you guys are doing. Uh, my name is Drew Tasca. I just moved into town. Uh, we run video production business and I was going to get my foot on the door with you. Um, I made you a video. It's ranking number one on YouTube. Let me know what you think. And then like I sent him that. Cause like, I mean, the same way that you get like, uh, the phone calls that like, uh, people are like trying to like, you know, like, Hey, like the car insurance, whatever the situation is business owners get emails about like me. I don't know how many I deleted today from my inbox ready of like, um,
So the other thing that you could do, is, it's called warming up. And the same thing, like when versus me spending time, like um, watching videos about, yeah, hey, 30, I hit 31. That's very nice. Uh, uh, that's the crypto guy, right? Or... So, well, he's crypt. So I actually got, I found Alex Becker because like, if you ever want to like, if you really want to learn about growing your business, like listen to this dude's videos, like Sim Ovens is like a fucking G. Like this dude right here, like some of his stuff is like, could be very boring when it comes down to like business sh and like actually like running a business. Like this dude knows what's up. Like to me, he's like a very hardcore, like a lot of stuff I learned in the beginning of like mindset and growing my business and like figuring out like what matters came from him. I found some ovens because he was Alex Becker's coach. Huh. And then I found, so I, I got into Alex Becker when he was doing like, um, he's a crypto guy now, but like when I came across his videos, he's doing like procrastination stuff, right? Or like mindset. He's doing mindset stuff stuff like um like you know millionaires make 2020 warnings like entrepreneurs on facebook dopamine like he started doing stuff about like you know why like why are you slowing down like um like you know like when he was like talk about like why he like left his house and like moved into like you know like removing those like different things around you that really fuck you up from like getting to where you want to go mm -hmm. so like these are like all the little things with like those like small mindset shifts that like you know i picked up from him and eventually through here, you know, he got into crypto and like all this different stuff. And then his channel here, you could tell like it changes from like, he's talking about like a lot of like mindset stuff and it goes into like, you know, doing crypto now, but it, it's all an evolution. But there's another guy that was, uh, so this dude here, like there's definitely a, like a fishiness, like a sketch side to him. Cause he's like every video he's like, you know, doing this, um, you know, he has some kind of like experiment 20, he has like an email emailing company type thing, but wow. there's good shit in here. Right. So it's like, as long as you can get past the fluff of like him telling, telling you about, um, you know, the program that he has on how you can do this. If you watch his video, like all this stuff that like I've told you about, like, hey, this is like, hey, I'm Rodrigo. Like I just worked with the company. I would learn from watching one of his free videos, but like, a lot of the stuff you just literally need to watch the videos, find the fucking gems and pull those out and make it into your own shit. Okay. But it, it's all out here. Like I watched like very little of like me, my history, I mean, a lot of it now it's been like client stuff and I've been learning more about crypto, but, and like I do research, I was working with a company that I'm doing like a, a big brand video for. So I'm like, I'm looking at like Blackstone, right? I'm like, I'm researching companies that are way bigger than what my company like achieves to be. What kind of videos are they doing? There's no video here on fucking filmmaking. You know what I mean? Like all this stuff I'm doing, it's literally purely research on like, I mean, this one has corporate interview tutorial. Cause like, in a sense, like I'll get this, but like talking about like gimbal shots and things like that. Like I spend very little time learning that shit. And I'm like trying to figure out like, how can I make my business better? And those are the kind of videos that I spend my time watching. Okay. No, yeah, yeah. man. I think that's the right way to go about it. Do you do any music videos i've done them in the past but the things with music i think music videos are worse than business owners because like first of all the artist usually wants to be the fucking creative director the director and they want to do all this shit <laughs> and they tell you yeah. they got 500 bucks and they want a mercedes benz they want a fucking rooftop and they want to party i'm just like you know then i'll tell them hey, coordinate it and i'll shoot it and then you coordinate there and there's like they got three people to show up so like unless it's like unless it's an artist that like i like and like i generally vibe with their music is the only way i'll do a music video for them like and i was like i'll put up the funds like i'll make a dope music video but like i need to like the song but like for me to just work with like my dear wants to do a video for 500 bucks it's a lot of fucking work and for your services you sell websites right <sighs> not really but yes so like I'll do Squarespace websites for clients. So like I'll like I'll have I think I had a call recently that I posted with somebody that they wanted like they came to me for a commercial and I was like, what are you gonna do? They're like, oh, are we gonna do this whole thing? I'm like, where are you gonna send them to? And they're like, oh my website. And I was like, what's your website? And then they're like, oh my website sucks. Like no one goes to us. Like so you want to spend five thousand dollars to send people to your website that you think sucks that you don't even like the way it looks and he's like yes so what do you think is the best thing for us to do he's like i tried to work my website i was like yeah and it's like do you do that i was like we normally don't but i think we can make an exception at this time you and know that was I mean? a squarespace website yep did you do seo okay but I, charged like him eight, a... I charged him eight thousand dollars for it okay so what what was the breakdown like for the website and the seo 
or is that all website seo and like a, a one minute explainer video like just the intro video like hey this is who i am this is what i do um i'll show you next i won't show you that client one but i'll show you my accountant one um so how much how much was it each for those three things that's the thing like i don't that's like i didn't even get in that's to me it was more of like uh it was more of what i wanted to charge for it okay. it wasn't so much of what um each thing broke down. I just told him a number. Okay. I was like, do you want this for me to like, for me to do your website and like do SEO for it? It's going to be $8,000. And they're like, okay. But that's not like a service you offer a lot, right? No. What about uh social media management, Drigo? Nope. It's like anything that to, like, that's the thing. Like when it comes down to um, how much is a client paying you? Doesn't make sense, right? For like a client to pay me 500 bucks a month to manage their social media. I'm like, what can I do? Like, I'd rather do two coaching calls in a month than to spend, like I'd rather, I'd rather spend two hours and make 500 bucks than to spend 10 hours throughout the month to make $500 and have to deal with the client over and over again. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, instead of managing it. Yeah, so this is like one that I did for my accountant. And, like, and I showed, and this is the one I showed that guy to close that $8,000 deal. But I was like, literally like, I just like fucking got some stock videos, made a banner video for them. You no, know, blah, 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 blah. And then I made like this little. Hey, are you overwhelmed with the bookkeeping at your business? Do you have a pile of taxes or receipts to review? When it comes to the accounting services for your business, you, you want an no? expert that will be able to yeah, guide you through the process and get the job done right. We have helped dozens of clients reduce their tax liability in the past 10 years. Don't just trust this job to anyone. We'd love 15 minutes of your time to see if you're a right fit and we'd love to help your business. We did that and then we were doing like a, a Facebook ad. It's like, is your currency pay cost your money? Hey, you probably found our website through one of our Facebook or Instagram ads. You're probably looking for some of our services in regards to bookkeeping or taxes. We would love to have 15 minutes of your time. If you think we're the right fit, Fill out the form below. We would love to give you a call. Um, so uh, a couple of things with this one. Yep. So for the Facebook ads, did you guys do that? I did that for a little bit, but it's like same thing. Managing Different it. Situation, right? It's my accountant. He's helping me save a lot of money during the year. He's telling me like, yo, can you run these Facebook ads for me? And I got you. I'm going to run some Facebook ads for him, right? Okay. And whatever I'm doing for the Facebook ads is going to be better than anything else that he's doing. Okay. So, like, in that sense, like, I will I will work with certain. That's when I tell you, like, I work with certain clients that make sense for me, then yes. Because, like, okay. you know what I mean? Like, how, like, pay taxes or how come my accountant with some video? <laughs> I'm going to hook up my accountant with some video. Yeah. All right. That's smart, man. Uh, and then with the, the stock footage, um, were they just not able to record some B-roll or no time? Um, no time. They just weren't ready. And honestly, they were like drinking beer the whole time. We we're filming those things. By the time we actually <laughs> got into anything serious, yeah, they yeah. were, they were like, so I did. So with them, I did their website. I redid their website. I did headshots for them as oh. well. We did like the headshots first. By the time we started doing the video, they're like already like started drinking some beers at the office. And they're just like their eyes are getting chingy and they're like slurring and like we're like, okay, like we're we're done with this. But you know, for them it works. It all depends on on like on because like for most people, for like for the accounting stuff, it's one of those things that's like it's not a very it's like the reason I told you about that client, it's like, hey, I think it would be better for you to actually show them, like show them doing something, is because it's a person's house. Like when you do account in your taxes, there's nothing visual or sexy about it, right? Right, right? So when they're the guys tell me like, oh, these people people spend a lot of time, you know, doing like these lights and all this, I'm not seeing any of it. So for me, there's a disconnect on it. So I'm like, me, I'm wondering why is it that he's talking about doing all these things, but I don't get to see any of it. So mm -hmm. for me, there's a disconnect in between that. I'm like, okay, so is it is his not good? But like, where is there no footage of this? Why? Like, I'm, I was waiting for it to see them working on something, and there was nothing there. So like for samples. me, I was like, okay. dude, to me, there was like, okay, why is there no footage of them? They're so good. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think it just worked out with the time. Um, and then like at some point, it was like one or two months after, and we're just like, dang, man, I gotta do some like stock footage at this point. Yeah. It's too long. But in that situation, like. 
see if there's like stock footage of like some houses in phoenix and just fucking like throw like the biggest thing for me that i felt disconnected with that video is like i didn't get to see anybody's yard like i saw some grass or something like that but like like show me some fucking drone footage over like a neighborhood or something like that so at least i know I'd be like okay there's there's a house so at least like let me put the two and two together yeah um and then for tv commercials man mm -hmm. what's kind of the requirement for that um what do you need honestly not a lot my first tv commercial that i shot was on my d7100 the only big thing was like i need to make sure like the audio level like they'll give you so you can do like 4k like that's good yeah shoot well everything you import for tv is going to be 1080p so when you're working for a tv commercial do you send that to the client and then they have their own person to run the tv commercials so my first one was like that my first tv commercial that i did i was working with the client so i did a one minute video for them then a client came back to me and they're like yo can we can you turn this one minute video into a 30 second video and i was like sure they didn't tell me what it was there's like can you make this into a 30 second video so i made them a 30 second video and then from there the tv station reached out to me and they're like hey we're working with so and so we got the video from you we just need like we need the time frame with the time or well, the frame rate change and we need to make sure that your colors aren't clipping at 100 can you do that and i was like sure so then they kind of they sent me their guideline which i'm trying to find right now like and, and like a lot of companies but pretty much they're like hey like they like the commercial and like that's how i kind of got started with doing tv commercials like i did this one for them and then from there they were just like hey can you do more commercials and i was like sure but like they're telling me like hey this is your this is the bit rate. This is the frame. Like they gave me all like the specs of like what I needed to be. So like, that's, someone, like, like unique, that's like unique to them. Is that, that's not like a standard or anything. Yeah. There's no standard. So like another company had like something toy, like we worked with like one, that $14,000, like video one, like that one was a pain in the ass because like that was a national tv commercial nice. and um like their delivery is like so this one needs to be like a fucking 60 frames per ray and you're like who the fuck is like why is this in 60 like it was just like they're like and the client's freaking out because like you know they're paying me that kind of money and they're like your things are getting rejected i'm like you fucking didn't send me the specs like how do i know like this one's supposed to be at 60 and like this is different so normally like everybody is from florida uh, this is something else. Comcast. So it's good to know up front then, right? Kind of like what they have. Yeah, if they ask you, and you know, what I mean, um, so this is somebody else. This is 2018, but these are like the networks that they are in partnership with, and this, like, I think this is probably the easier one. Um, it's so like you know, 30, 60. MPEG or you know dot two six four, and usually like I think I used to like go for. Are, are you uh? Because all I see is the folder. Is that what I'm supposed to look at? Oh, you don't see what's on my screen? I just like, see, no, I just see the, the finder, the desktop oh, shit, finder. I okay. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> how about now? Okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah so you'll tell me like, you know, the frame, like, you know, the dimensions, load time, the different times, like the title, the format and all of this stuff. And then like, just like name, like naming the files is a pain in the ass. Cause you need to figure out like, you know, this whole file structure to like, like how you write the name. And then you need to know like, what are they calling the ad? And they need to add like whatever their ad ID is to it. So like, there was like a lot of shit that like I needed to fucking figure out. Cause like when a client asked me like, oh, are you doing TV commercials? Like, yeah, we're doing TV commercials. Like, okay, great. We've got a national commercial going. And they're like, hey, we need you to add the ad ID and make sure that I was like, I was like, oh fuck. I'm like trying to Google this shit and YouTube it. And like, there wasn't a lot of information. Luckily enough, I knew somebody that used to do a lot of tv stuff and they kind of like guided me through some of it but like the beginning was like you know confusing and then like same thing like everyone gives me shit about like why i don't shoot in 24 rates because like a lot of the work i do is television and a lot of it is 29 or 50 and like i still rather shoot 20 29.97 versus 24 because it just gives me so much more flexibility like with editing and different things like that then honestly for me i don't see the difference between 24 and 30 but that's just me you know i mean i've done this with other people i show them like two different videos like which one's 24 and 27 and i'd say 75 percent of the time people get it wrong but i don't know but that, that might be just me uh, that, that was helpful because I, I always wondered about like because you know that's something i would always want to do tv mm -hmm. Um, but for right now, you know, I'm making this like social content, YouTube content and, uh, like video ads for businesses. The 
if I was you right now and I wanted to get into television, watch, go watch some TV, write down. And the other thing, you know, uh, you know about this website, I think it's called. Uh, is it like TV commercial ads or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it iSpot? And so I get a lot of my TV, like my last Brown commercial that I did. I got the idea from watching like a Budweiser commercial, but you could like um, put the name of a business here. So like, um, they're not writing anything. So I mean, let's just go with like, let's try to find somebody local to make him. So like, normally you could like look up local companies as well. You could look up to see what TV commercials they're doing. But in your situation, if there's like a local, like if you're watching TV and you see somebody that like you see during commercial, I'll come on here. See if they're running any TV ads on here. If they're not on here, the next thing I'll do is go to Facebook ads library, put in their name here, mm -hmm. go to all ads, United States. Let's see, Brown distributing, Canada, oh, Brown distributing Richmond. So like, I mean, they're running some ads, you know, they're like these sponsor stuff, but anyway, like I'll come on here to see, are they running ads? Right. And like follows you. If I'm like trying to get into television and I see that they're running social media ads and they're running TV ads, I'd be like, yo, I'm a cinematographer. I love the guys. I love the stuff you guys are doing. I'd love to get my foot uh, into the television world. Can I shoot you a free commercial? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you like, you guys can air it. You guys can do whatever you want. Do anything I ask for. Just have the creative control. I'll shoot the commercial. And then, you know, that commercial eventually is going to have to go to the television and the, the, the commercial is good. What's going to happen, the TV stations would be like, yo, do you do, are you taking on more clients? You know what I mean? Like how much are these commercials costing? And that's how I got started. And uh, so they, they can do 1080p. It doesn't have to be 4k. Wow. 1080. I guess my last thing is, you know, are there any, besides the ones we went over, are there any like other resources you think are, were like really helpful for you when you were starting out? Do you know the big things that helped me? Like I did a couple lighting courses, um, like, I think learning about pricing is probably the big, I think the biggest thing that helped me was to get comfortable talking about money. Like I watched, like the reason I got into the future pro group was like, I literally watched every single video the future had like all their like, uh, live stream calls. Like I, I got to a point that like, I learned everything possible that I could about pricing before I joined the group. So I think like, that's really important. And, um, I mean, I've done a couple of different workshops and stuff like that, but like just put yourself out there to people that are doing more than what you're doing right now and see how you could be of a benefit to them because like that's gonna be the fastest way like for like for you to grow and like the best way like for you to like do it really fast yeah. is to watch somebody else do it and just replicate that shit no i got it bro um how can i help you man like what can i do help you out keep supporting you dude just keep just keep doing your thing bro um you know i want to keep watching you grow um you know if you, your next inquiry that you have just hit me up and be like yo this is where i'm at this is what they're asking for if it's like through an email or dm just like shoot me like a voice message or whatever on ig he's like hey this is what they're asking for like how would you go about this you know what i mean let's try to get your next project more than what you're charging for right now oh, yeah. and then like if you really want to help i think this is a really awesome call i don't share all my uh my calls on youtube but i think this one could be one beneficial to a lot of people if you're up for it i'll love to share this one uh, think about it and let me know i'm leaning towards yeah man i mean yeah it's just uh you know i my my thing is like i for sure want to put it out there as much as possible but yeah man i guess just got to be open and put it out there but yeah let's do it what are you hesitant about like i don't want to i don't want to put it off if you're if it's like if you have, if you're hesitant about it i'd rather not even do it but i think I mean? i'm not uh like i, I eventually do want it out mm -hmm. i don't think anytime soon okay. just so i can like get some work in you know gotcha. and make some improvements and then so it's not like i'm in the same spot and you know what i mean i mean the pressure of having people watching you and that's the other thing too like i've seen other people like i've done calls with like the amount of support you might get from other people like flicks by ryan's another person that like after we did our video like he reached out to me like dude a lot of people came out so just like yo yeah, because that's I the thing for that. me like when you have someone now that's be like i i literally i was i'll share a message one that i got earlier today i saw but, the uh, one with uh joey too joey yeah so. dude joey right now like i'm like so i have like i'm so proud of joey for like i'm like every video joey drops right now i'm like why the f that I don't have that video on my website. Why am I not posting that? But uh, somebody was like, hey man, happened to be listening to the question of today and came across the story. Couldn't help out uh, to laugh because it's very similar to the story of mine. Just letting you know, I'll be following you and keep grinding, man. It's like, that's a little shit that like brings joy to my heart. That I'm like, I'm like, 
Yeah, because like, some days are like today was such a long day. Like I just got back from New Orleans yesterday and I just like had a shoot. I had to drive an hour each way to go to the shoot, come back here and do this. And you get a message like that. You're like, fuck, bro, just, just fucking keep going. You know what I mean? But we'll we'll hold off from posting it when you're ready to do it. You let me know. No, nah, bro. I mean, go ahead, man. I'm, I'm good. I'll check with you in like a week or two. I can't edit it. I'm <laughs> so backed up right now. I'll see how we're feeling in a week and we do, you know, we'll see how everything is from there. All right. Sounds good, man. No problem. I mean, let's, we'll be in touch. Uh, do you have a copy of my contracts already? Yeah, I, I think I, yeah, yeah, I, I did buy some um, and I used those. Do you know which one you have? Did you buy the corporate one? Yeah, the corporate. Okay, cool. I um, I got this other thing that I'm working on. That's like my production uh, thing for uh, that we do on shoots. I'll uh, send you a copy of that so you could have that has helped me a lot on shoots too. Uh, All right, man. So, sounds good. Production plan. So, man, well, uh, I'm going to get this footage backed up and uh, I'll send you a link uh, tomorrow morning with uh, the copy of it and everything. All right. All right. Thanks, Rodrigo. Appreciate All right, brother. It. Have a good one, man. Peace.